Thank you guys for tuning in. And this is another video where I will share my thoughts on the markets in the cryptocurrencies. Right now, we have a really big shakeup that just happened because we've experienced this crazy rush of the altcoin markets. But if we actually look at history, this is not that uncommon. We have here this beautiful treat from Brad Mills who points out the trend and pattern that happens with the Bitcoin dominance. So we've just went through this experience where the altcoin markets had this crazy run up. It's the biggest run up ever. But we actually can see that this has happened in the past previously in 2016, in 15 and even in 2014 but it's getting stronger and stronger. And what is happening is that a lot of value is flowing away from Bitcoin into the altcoins. But it looks like this trend is reversing. In other words, what we're seeing right now is a big altcoin bubble that has happened and that is now in the process of consolidating. So I really kind of want to talk a little bit about how to deal with that. And I think one good way to deal with this is to look at other things and apply things that we can learn in other metiers or in other skills and apply them to cryptocurrency because cryptocurrency is so new. And the very first thing I wanted to show you is poker because I'm a poker player and I feel like a lot of the skills um, in, in kind of a wagering that you do at a table applies to cryptocurrency. And I want to just make you aware of this one guy um, that has been really, really popular and his name was Isildur. And Isildur came into the market in 2009, was the hottest player because he ran up his account from zero to six million in no time. And he was playing against the absolute best players in the world and was entirely fearless and kicking their ass, literally. So all these good players were playing against him and he was losing against them. But then in one session, he lost $4 million to one player. And so what happened to this player is he won crazy amounts of money and then he crashed. Uh, he's still very, very famous and everybody loves him, but his results are not that amazing. Um, he then had uh, sponsorships with poker stars and other sites. But you can see overall his profit is not that great. Overall, he's lost about $5 million. That's probably the money he got for his sponsorship deals. So I want to really um, avoid you guys having a similar experience in this cryptocurrency market where you win a lot of money and then it comes all crashing down on you and you end up losing more than you're actually making by investing in the market. So just be very aware and respect the variance and respect that trading is not an easy thing. And just because you have a couple of successes doesn't mean that you can do this professionally. So just respect the variance and the risks um, and the fact that you're really in a, tar in a shark tank where there's many people that are very skilled and very smart and their job is basically to rape you financially. So um, be careful and just respect that if you can sustain yourself, if you can survive in this market, that is obviously amazing. Another thing that we can uh, take into account uh, from a skill perspective is, of course, the trading at Wall Street. So um, here I have a book from Tony Robbins, and he's basically saying that, well, trading is not that good, not that amazing because most people, when they trade, they lose. It's similar like in poker. Most people in poker, actually 90% of players lose. And so in trading, it's very similar. Most people have a hard time beating the market. So instead, what is good in trading, if you are just kind of not a professional trader, is that you do invest into the market. And the advantage of, the, uh, of stocks, and I think that is also true for the cryptocurrency market, is that this is not a zero-sum game like in poker, but it is actually a market that is growing and growing every year. So we see here, we have this chart that the S&P um, on average makes you about 8% per year. But this is if you are in the market over a long period of time and don't trade in and out of it. Because the risk of trading is exactly what he's showing here, that if you're not in the market at the big days, it is really hard to beat, to beat the market. 
So if you're missing a couple of these top days, then you're very quickly going from um, making money um, to not making any money. Other thing that is very, very important are fees. Now this in cryptocurrencies, the fees are really, really low. So this is one reason why you should trade in the crypto market. But another thing, especially if you live in America, is if you have to take into account is taxes. If you have a 30% tax rate, then basically every time you win, the government gets 30% of it. And if you lose, it's all on you. So this is especially true if you make money in one year and don't make money in another year. Respect these facts. Um, and so what I do a lot with uh, my investment is I try to just invest into these projects and infrastructures for the long term. So I'm a big believer in Bitcoin. I'm a big believer in Ethereum. And I think the easiest way to just make money from these markets is by going in putting your money and just letting it sit. So I'm not selling Ethereum right now because if I were to sell my Ethereum coins, then I would have to uh, pay taxes on my winnings. And if I, for instance, have a 30% tax rate, I might as well take a 30% hit on the market and just keep my Ethereum because I believe in the long term Ethereum keeps going up. So in other words, I have to do better than 30% with a trade in order to actually make money. Of course, my losses, I can deduct those. But still, if I make money, um, the government gets, gets a big chunk of it. And so because of that, I basically um, just try to stay in the market. So I apply these things that we know from the stock market. I try to apply them to cryptocurrencies. And so here you see that um, if you do perfect timing, obviously you make a lot more money, but um, it's not that important. So the most important thing is that you are in the money with your market. And this is another chart that shows what Tony is saying here is that the most important thing is to be in the market that is profitable. So instead of trading uh, and trying to beat the market, just put your money in the market and it doesn't really matter how much um, it that much when you put your mar money in. It's just important that you don't take it out and back in and then do bad timing. Of course, if you do perfect timing, i.e. always uh, buy at the low and sell at the high, then you make the most amount of money relative to cash. But you can also see even if you suck at timing, if you just stay in the market for a long amount of time, provided that the market is going up overall, well then just stay invested, write it out. I have I have friends, for instance, that bought Bitcoin in 2013, you know, at at the at, a, at the high mark. And of course, they were crushed two, two years later. But if you just kept on kept holding your Bitcoins, you're doing fine again. So this is exactly an example of this. And probably in the next five years, it's not going to matter very, very much. The most important fact is that they actually did invest into the market. Yeah, but enough of this uh, theoretical stuff. Let's take a look at some charts. So we see here, this is the Bitcoin mar uh, market. And uh, we have seen Bitcoin crash down and bounce against this uptrend. So a little bit what we have here predicted is that these longer uptrends will probably hold. Um, that, that was the case and we bounced against this, this uptrend. Now it's very interesting. The price right now is making a decision to either break out of this short term downtrend that was formed or come back, consolidate and bounce against this uptrend again. Now, I think that in general, Bitcoin is uh, relatively strong. Um, so I think these uptrends will probably hold. I can't imagine that Bitcoin is just going to collapse within the next couple of um, months. So I'm just expecting these sort of uh, trends here to happen. And again, always forget about the drama. There's always this Bitcoin drama going on. And it sounds like the world is going to crash. If you read some Reddit or if you if you look on Twitter and see all these guys fighting. But uh, these, this drama has been going on uh, for a long time and it's mostly just political. In the end, Bitcoin does work and we see this um, at the price. And so I much rather follow these these trend lines uh, than worry about the drama. 
if for instance a hard fork actually happens well then we can deal with it and then we can look at it but right now this is all just to me um, drama that will probably sort itself out that's just the way bitcoin has been designed let's take a look at ethereum in ethereum we see these uh a trend that we are now seeing happening where this rush into the alt markets is now fading away and so ethereum has consolidated um, and is kind of fighting here uh, with this re um, resistance or support line around the 41 line here and so it might go back up but I actually expect Ethereum really to crash down. We've seen a lot of these runs that were so crazy. Often the coins um, lose about 50% of uh, what, they, what, what they've what they made in these really crazy runs that happen really, really fast. So we'll see there are a couple of um, support lines where we can see or can imagine Ethereum going up again. One of these um, will likely happen. So one, one of the strategies that one could apply is to put buy orders in here and buy orders in down here uh, so that you can catch the markets at their low points and then um, get, get the rallies that will follow afterwards. Dash, of course, is even crazier. So Dash went from $10 to $100 and now is really crashing down. So I, I don't know exactly what is going on. We can also see a little bit of a really crazy uptrend developing here. I haven't drawn this in because I think it's still a bit too early um, to take a look at this, um, at this price. So we'll see what happens, whether we are here um, maybe at a fair market around 50 or whether we are going to come crashing down even more, especially with all the competition. There's a lot of competitors to Dash that are coming up. I haven't studied them in detail. This is uh, some of the homework that I will do in the next couple of, of days, especially with Pivx. There's been now interviews and, um, and some interesting articles that, that I mean to, to read. Monero is very interesting because it seems it looks very healthy relative to the other altcoins. Um, nonetheless, I guess Monero will also take part of this consolidation. So I could very much imagining uh, Monero consolidating a bit slower than other coins to this uptrend right here. So I think maybe at 17 or something or 1750, that might be a good entry point for Monero. If we're really lucky, there might be a bounce already here above the previous high of about $18. I also wanted to point out some of the other coins that are very stable altcoins. So all this craze going on with these new, new coins uh, that just explode. There are some coins that have been fairly stable. One of these coins is, uh, is MateSafe. So MateSafe has shown a very consistent uptrend here that has happened in the, in, in, since, since it came out. So it relative to the other markets, it seems quite stable. So if you are looking for places to maybe park some money or have some money be a bit more safe, MateSafe is one of the things that, that I like. The other thing that I really like is Factum. Uh, they are working together with governments. So there's some, some real business behind these projects that is happening and behind these coins. So Factum has just generally been, been stable, hasn't crashed down and has shown a nice consistent uptrend. So this is also something that might be a good way uh, to park some money. Yeah, and this is what I wanted to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please provide the feedback in the comments in YouTube. That is very helpful for me. Yeah, and then please keep in mind that uh, this is not investment advice. This is just educational um, and entertainment video here, what I'm doing. I'm not an expert and please make your own decision and make them responsibly. Thanks. And again, I look forward to your feedback.